Christmas. Happy Christmas. Thank you very much Happy indeed. Happy Christmas to you too. Are you, are you excited about Christmas? Is it a big thing in your houses? Yeah, I guess it is, particularly <laughs> now I've got grandkids. Yeah, you know, they all get excited. Christmas is massive in my house because I've got a little seven-year-old, as you know, so she's just so excited for Santa. Right. And it's fantastic seeing it all through her eyes again, you know, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, Can't course. wait. <laughs> um, Sonia, official sweetheart of Liverpool. Aww. You were such a young lass when you rocked up to Pete's studio. Mm. Is it, I mean, I love this story. Is it true you went up and you just mithered Pete and said, let me sing for you? Well, I did. I mean, I was, I was 17 years old. Um, wow, I just loved Pete's music so much and I wanted to be involved in, you know, in the whole hit factory. And uh, I just thought the main thing is to go to the main man, you know, and... Uh, he was doing a, a, a radio show in Liverpool and I, I said to my sister, I'm going to go and I'm going to meet him, I'm, I'm going to tell him exactly who I am and everything, you know, and, uh, and I did. I went up to him, I said, Pete, listen, my name's Sonia, Sonia Evans. I said, if you don't sign me up, somebody will. Uh, you're going to miss out. And I, I think he was, he was... It's so, true, it's true. <laughs> I think true. He was so shocked of the actual, the cheek of it, you know, mm. that he was intrigued then to, to see, if, you know, what I could do. So, yeah. yeah. Do you remember what you sang? Wow, was it? I, was it, um, open up your eyes, nope. then you'll realise... No. Oh, that was lovely, that. Oh. Was it one, two, three? It was. Yeah. It was one, two, three, Glory Rest That's upon right. You, so. Oh, they're one, two, three. Uh -oh. Come on, baby, Let say you love me. So what I did, right, so I said, OK, if you can, sing this. And literally gave her a mic. This was live on radio, by the way. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, and, and I gave her, and I said to the kids, she's going to sing the Glory Rest upon one, two, three. And, and all the went, switchboard went mad. Yeah, the she just went off. Oh, I love that stuff. Just did it. A week it's... later, a young girl, girl called it. Because um, the kids used to call in, you know, and ask requests. And um, she'd called in from Bedingborough, I think it was, and, and she said, could you just give a message to my boyfriend who's fallen out with me, but I'll never stop me loving He'll never stop me loving me. And I went, oh, my God. And I went into the studio and I said to Mike, you know what? This kid's come up with this and I've got the girl that could we could tie this into the radio. Mm. There's a story here, you know. Nice. And, that, and that's what it came about. Beautiful. We're going to play it in a minute, actually. And, and it was a huge ambition of yours to get through the doors of this hit factory. Did it feel like a magical place? Did you bump into all the stars there? It was like, you know, Kylie there in reception with her feet up, having a fag. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, was, was, did it feel like as awesome as you anticipated? It was completely electric. Um, it was amazing. And, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd meet people on the stairs as you went past, Jason, Kylie, Rick, everyone was there. And it was a magical, magical time, you know, because um, nobody nobody could touch them. It was hit after hit, everything they touched turned to gold. And you could sense the electricity when you actually went into the studio. You really could, you know? Well, we're going to play You'll Never Stop Me From Loving You Now. Video-wise, did you have influence over the videos? How did it work? I didn't, know. No. I I'm the worst person when it comes to visuals. Uh, you wouldn't want me to get, do your video, let me tell you. <laughs> no, you definitely said, not. Did you enjoy doing the video, Sonia? I did. I had a great time. I mean, it was it was hilarious when I turned up and they said, this is going to be your love interest. And he was about six foot five and I'm like five foot one. I was like... <laughs> right, bring out the yellow pages, stack them up. <laughs> it's going to work. There. But it re really worked well. It was really quirky and fun as well. Yeah, Everyone always comments on the video. OK. Oh, well, we're He's quite enjoy tall, now. isn't he? Like you <laughs> say, the guy is <laughs> really tall. <laughs> it's tall. Over you. He's got a look in Nick Haywood about him, actually. He was a nice guy. Look. Um, so, you know, you were so young. You were 18, 18 weren't yeah. you? And did you feel sort of, you know, thrown in at the deep end with this? I mean, how did she cope with it, Pete? Well, we were quite brutal. Okay. We were quite brutal because we just... i just started the Hitman Road Show, um, where we took, you know, all the artists on a bus and we took them all around Britain. And it was a pound to get in. And you got a free burger and a free drink. For a uh, quid? Yeah, for a quid. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, I remember we'd uh, put Sonia on the bus. Mm. She hadn't even learnt the song properly. She certainly hadn't learnt any dance routine. And we were in Bournemouth. Beautiful. And the show part, wasn't going particularly well. So I said to Sonia, right, oh, kid, you're on next. She'd, ne she'd never, never, never had a chance it. to learn, learn, really learn the lyrics, you know. Yeah. I said, Pete, well, well, what are we going to do? He said, if you, if you get any of the lyrics, kid, just spin. Just keep spinning. I was like, whoa, what do you mean? Just keep spinning. Yeah. What, what do you mean spin? It's spinning just turn around. Just so they couldn't see you were, you were singing. <laughs> when you're like, la, la, rhubarb, rhubarb. Do you remember what I had to do as well? I had nothing to wear. 
So I, I only had the Hazel Dean jeans on and a jacket. I swear. Oh, bless. I mean, how much do we love Hazel Dean? Does she look <laughs> after you a little bit? She did. She does. She's still lovely to, to this day, you know. She's, she's a great one. We love lovely. her on this show. But the amazing thing was, she went on yeah. and stole the show. Oh. And, I mean, we knew straight away. I, I remember ringing Mike Stock and saying, I think... We've got a number one record here. Did you meet her mum and dad and how does it work? Because, you know, you, you've looked after lots of young stars. Have you ever had parents who are reticent about you taking their babas under your wing and making oh, yeah. them into pop stars? Oh, of course. Of course. Sonia's uh, My father were, came. Yeah, yeah, he came down and we insisted. Um, the Reynolds girls, yeah. uh, they had their dad on the bus. Oh, I remember that, and, yeah. Uh, you know, Wally was on the bus... And it was, I felt sorry for the girls because their dad was on the bus. So, debut album, did huge things. All the singles became top 20 hits. I mean, was when there's an album that you're releasing like this with Sonia, is, is there a master plan or, like you say, is, is it a bit of luck? How, do, how does it work with your pop stars? Yeah, everybody looks back now and says the whole Kylie thing was brilliant, but it was pure luck. Mm. And the same with Sonia. I mean... The, the fact that she walked up to me and the, that somebody called in the show with the title a week later and we, we were on tour at that point. Yeah. You know, it, it, that's all luck. You mentioned uh, Kylie and it being luck with Kylie. Who suggested the Kylie and Jason duet? We're going to play it now. Uh, I can mention this now because they're no longer in existence. Woolworths. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It, what, they suggested it? Oh, yes, there's no question. I mean, you know, as much as everybody liked to take credit, it was down to Woolworths who, who actually said... If we did a duet between Kylie and Jason, they'd order a quarter of a million. <gasps> you know. Oh, I love that. Having oh said that, gosh. we didn't take it serious. Mm. And, it, you know, it wasn't an easy thing to talk Kylie and Jason into it. I, have I to was going to say, did they need no, much No, 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 they needed seriously talking into it. Why? Because they were pals, weren't they? Yeah, but it was... Uh, I guess it was perceived by everybody as too commercial. Right. But what happened to me, I was coming out of Radio City on this Saturday morning... And the kids were just saying, you know, why are you not doing a Kylie and Jason? You become snotty, you know, you become like the establishment. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you always did what we wanted, what well, we want Kylie and Jason. And I went to Kylie and said, look, you know, the kids are right. This is what they want. You yeah. know, we're, we're being like a major record company. We're saying this is just too commercial. Well, if that's what people want, we should not be so stuffy as this. Yeah, amazing. And it wasn't easy. It was fraught. I mean, it was yeah. the most difficult thing other than Band Aid we ever did. Mm -hmm. I mean, we flew, Matt and I flew to Australia on the Sunday night. We got there Monday night. They finished Neighbours at about seven o'clock. We worked all night and then caught the flight back. Yeah. Uh, we got back into uh, Britain on the Wednesday morning. We started and then we played at the staff at about six o'clock Wednesday night and it wasn't very good. Right. You, could, you could tell the staff were so disappointed. What, in the sound of the single? Yeah. Um, Your memory, I know all this. We landed Wednesday, six o'clock. I can't remember what I did yesterday. I mean, <laughs> no, no, this is like 30 years ago. Because I remember man. to do this, we had to have the, the, the records to the factory. Yes. Because in those days, they had to be physically pressed. Yeah, wow. So we had a deadline of eight o'clock on the Wednesday night. So did you do anything between the staff being like, yeah, it's all right? Oh, yeah, did I you... said to Mike, stop, we've got to start again. So Mike and Matt literally took every instrument off tape, just kept Kylie and Jason and rebuilt the record and... By one o'clock in the morning, we got the record that you heard. Was Mike Stock a, gen a genius like that in the studio? Could yeah. he just pull it out of the bag? But, yeah, yeah because it? he could see that the staff were as disappointed as, as, as um, we were. And the reason was we tried to be too clever. Yeah. We just missed, missed the point that Kylie and Jason were Kylie and Jason. Yeah. Trying to make something different. Didn't work. Sounds like a cooperative. It's nice that the staff can be honest because they weren't like, yes, sir, Peter, yeah, it's yeah. great. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, no, 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 no the they staff were, were brutal. Yeah. Oh, no, the staff... Tell you what uh, in fact, without the staff, it wouldn't have worked. Because I could judge what we were doing by the way the staff reacted. Yeah. Wow, gosh, with that backstory, I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, so, uh, did get to number one in the UK, but... Uh, not for Christmas. Not, for, not in time for Christmas. Kept off by uh, Cliff Richard. Oh, uh, really? And suddenly our record masters bust, and we have five days where we couldn't send any records to the shops. But, I mean, that did sell over a million and a quarter records. Amazing. So it went to number one in the new year, you know. But we learned a lesson. 
We never let anybody else ever press our records again after that. We did. Yeah, I was going to say, else. getting another record company to press no, your record. That's what we did in those days. What, because there was just just no. not, not not that many factories or whatever no. who'd do so them? we had to set up our own factory to do it. Um, Sonia, we've got, we've got to move on to a sad bit now, with you leaving Stock Aiken and Waterman in 1991. Mm -hmm. you, why did you decide to fly the nest? And is it all right to talk about this while you're both sitting here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it an emotional time? Well, it was, but I just think, um, I don't know, it'd come to an end and, you know, I was I was 19 years old, I'd been on this roller coaster. I like it. I was 19 <laughs> by then, I mean, still <laughs> so young, but yeah. yeah. You'd had a, a huge first album, I think, got yeah. number seven, didn't it? And you felt, you just felt it was time. Well, yeah, and I'd, I think I'd just been so, so busy as well. Um, I was kind of exhausted as well, I missed my family as well, and I think it just come to the end of the line, really, you know? When, when it comes to those tricky conversations, Pete, do you try and make these sort of, you know, divorces amicable when your stars w want to leave your label? Do you try and cling on to them, or do you have just such a huge can't. roster of stars that you just... You, you well, you can't... No, you can't cling on. No. No, if an artist wants to go, an artist has to go. Yeah. Um, that was our mm. philosophy. Even when the three of us broke up, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't acrimonious, it was just, mm. well... The party's over. Time yeah. to go home and do our own things. The party restarted briefly in 2012 with your little reunion gig. Was it one big gig, that, or did you do a mini tour of it? What no, it was one it? big gig. Yeah, and how, how did it go? Who was on the bill? Well, everybody. Everybody. It was an amazing was... time. It really was. It was like, oh, wow, trip down memory lane. It was just... I mean, how did it feel to be back on stage and singing those songs again? Well, I still, still sing to this day. Yeah. And nearly every weekend I'm somewhere. Are uh, you really? A couple of weeks ago I was in South Africa doing some shows um, with Lonnie Gordon, actually. Um, so I'm still, still gigging all around, yeah. doing all the festivals, doing all the shows, and... I feel really lucky to be able to still do that. Um, now, a new CD that we've got to talk about. It's the Hit Factory Ultimate Collection of 50 classic hits from a golden age of pop featuring 40 smash hits. Yeah, that's incredible, isn't it? I mean, you, you well, guys, we, you know, it was insane. Listening to Sonia there, we didn't yeah. think this was going to happen. We didn't think that, you know, 30 years on, Sonia would be in South Africa singing. Yeah. We just never, we never dreamt it. Nobody ever, you know, everybody thought what we were doing was candy floss. Yeah. didn't realise that we'd have the reverence for, for, for this stuff 30 years later. Yeah. I mean, it's an incredible legacy, isn't it, when you think of it, when you think of all the stars who went through your doors and all the hits. Yeah, and, and you know, Rick's had a phenomenal year. Mm -hmm. I've just been to see Banana Rama. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a testimony to how, actually, how good they actually were. Yeah, good luck with that. That album's out now. We're going to play Do They Know It's Christmas Band Aid 2, um, which, what happened with this? Did Bob bring you up? Yeah, we were, we were on our way to our Christmas party uh, and Bob called us and said, uh, it's your turn. My turn for what, Bob? Well, you're still starving people. I want you to do Band Aid. And literally, I had a conversation with him, went to this Christmas party and said, everybody, you've got to be back at work Sunday. We're doing Band Aid. And that was it. Wow. Was your heart thumping when he said that? Were you, were you not a little bit over overawed with it? No, because we had... Um, we had a perfect way of getting around the problem. The problem with all was, with these records, was how many people turned up that wanted to do it. Mm. And the rule was very simple f for me. If you're not going to knock yourself off number one, you can't do it. Yeah. So all the acts that did it would have been, could have been number one for Christmas. So they were literally giving something up. And memories from that day, I mean, anything that particularly... You were there, weren't you, son? Yes, yeah. I was there, most definitely, yeah. Well, it was Sunday morning and yeah. I was just round the flat thinking, oh, what's going to happen today, you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. Phone went, get down the studio, come on, quick, get down. Went, why, why, what, 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 what shall I wear, whatever, just throw something on and get down there. I think you served the drinks as well. I think you kept everybody... Because think... everybody mucked in. Yeah. That yeah. was the whole point, you know. People were turning up all the time and, uh, you know, by the end of the day... I, oh, I've never been so tired. I mean, there's a picture of the three of us against a wall, yeah. and literally we're drained. Yeah, just the intensity of that oh. many people and also quite a big responsibility and, to make and, sound. And literally, we had 15 hours, mm -hmm. so you've got to keep everybody going, you know. Bross insisted they, they, they do their own drums three times. Who brossed it? No, 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 lads, we haven't got time to... to <laughs> no, please, no, no. No, I'm going to write plate. No, no, no. Oh, all right, I'm go on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> who else was there? Can you remember? Kylie and Jason. Oh, yeah. uh, wet, 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 wasn't wet, it? Wet, wet. I mean, everybody just turned up, you know, yeah. Cliff Richard. I mean, Lisa like... Stansfield. Yeah, it was just... Yeah, uh... 
I remember being chuffed doing the harmonies with Lisa Stansfield. I was like, oh, oh she's so fantastic. cool. Lisa from Good Rochdale last yeah. year. Well. She's and lovely. Great pictures. I mean, you know, we were we were in the studio we called the dungeon because it was in the bottom of the ba basement. Yeah. And the pictures are fantastic mm. with everybody, you know, singing. Great. It's Such a great fabulous. Great Christmas tune. It's been great chatting to you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to end on it now. Band aid two. Do they know it's Christmas? Great video, look at Didn't Cliff. we all look there. young? Yeah, you, look, God. you still do. Oh, my God. You still do. Yeah, is it weird when you look back at oh, that? It's, it's so weird. Yeah. Just, I mean, what a, what a few decades you've had, though. Oof, amazing. What a ride. What a ride. Great chance. Thank you so much. That, of course, Do They Know It's Christmas by Band Aid 2. Christmas number one, yes, 1989, it had to be. Well done to all concerned, and especially to you two, Sonia and Pete Waterman. Been brilliant guests today. Thank you so much. Can we have more cheering, please? <laughs> As we wish you a very happy Christmas. Thank you. And you too. Merry Christmas. You can watch our chat again if you fancy anytime at bbc.co.uk slash radio 2.